Okay, I admit I have a terrible fetish for racing gearboxes, and nothing is more salacious than a hybrid era Formula One gearbox. But the inner workings of these gearboxes are closely a guarded secret, and there is zero publicly available information. But uh, a few months ago, in part due to my uh, first 3D printed F1 gearbox, an F1 insider reached out and provided me with a wealth of information about this particular gearbox. I can't thank this individual enough, and if you're watching this, you know, please let me know if I can go ahead and credit you by name. Now, I don't want to disappoint anyone, but I can't share the information that I was given or the details around the car it comes from. I know that's a bummer for a lot of you, but I think this just makes it all the more exciting. My goal for this design is to be as close as possible to the real gearbox. I'll do my best to highlight areas where I needed to fill in missing information, make changes uh, for 3D printing, or just take artistic license. Like my last gearbox, this will be a semi-functional 3D printed model. It is not something uh, you will be able to directly CNC and throw into a car. That would take you know thousands of hours of development and design and millions of dollars in materials and tooling. In case you haven't seen my previous F1 gearbox video series, I'll give you a brief introduction to Formula One seamless gearboxes and why they're so unique and amazing. First off, modern F1 gearboxes shift extremely fast. There are no exact figures available, but most likely it's in the two to four millisecond range, and that's around a couple hundred times faster than a blink of an eye. Formula One gearboxes are a dog clutch type gearbox similar to what you might find in a motorcycle or a sequential shifting uh, race car. But if you notice at the top, instead of one, they have two shift drums. Uh, one shift drum moves the shift forks for the even number gears and the other moves the shift fork for the odd gears. These shift drums are independently controlled, allowing them to overlap the selection of gears and theoretically partially engaging two gears at once for just a few microseconds. This is where the term seamless gearbox comes from because there is no measurable loss of torque between shifts. F1 gearbox designs are heavily regulated by the FIA rulebook, which specifies everything from the minimum distance between the shafts to the thickness and the materials of the gears. The rules don't allow dual clutches or CVTs. Um, the gearboxes must have eight forward speeds plus reverse with a fixed set of gear ratios that are used for the whole season. Also, gears must be at least 12 millimeters thick and made of steel, um, but rest assured, this is some very special and expensive proprietary steel alloy that they're made out of. Additionally, F1 teams can only use six gearboxes per season. This is important because in the previous video, I mentioned uh, some rather unique designs with one-way clutched gears and multi-phase shifts. While I don't see any evidence of these more complex mechanical designs, and that's probably due to durability concerns and the additional torque generated by the turbocharged engines. So I'm a little sad about that, but it makes sense uh, given the rules. Now this CAD design is still rough at this stage, but there's still a lot to discuss. Uh, so let's start with the overall shape, which is extremely important. The biggest change between this gearbox and the earlier x track P1044 that I made a model of is the focus on the form factor and further optimization. The P1044, uh, depending on the year and the team, was actually a very wide gearbox, and there was a lot of focus on actually lowering the center of gravity of the car and making it as short in length as possible. The hybrid era gearbox is clearly focused on improving aerodynamics of the car by being as narrow as possible. The reason for this is the rule limitations around the dimensions of the rear diffuser. This narrow V-shaped gearbox allows the diffuser expansion area to be as large as possible to help increase downforce. Just like the uh, P1044, uh, this gearbox is all about the unbelievable level of integration and optimization. The front cover is so much more complex than the earlier gearboxes. There's no easy way to design this beast. I mean, the F1 engineers and designers are really three-dimensional gods. All the major parts of this gearbox are mounted on or interact with the front cover. Every mount, boss, and rib is individually designed and optimized. It has integrated oil galleys and studs and sensors everywhere. There's just not a single bit of excess aluminum 
anywhere on the cover. I've redesigned the front cover at least three times now from scratch, but I want to get it right because that level of exactitude is what these gearboxes are all about. At the top of the gearbox here, we have the shift barrels and the shift forks. The shift forks are unique because of their arrangement. Their offset shift pins allow for a single shift fork guide tube and for the shift barrels to be placed as close together as possible. Another design difference on this gearbox is the multiple unique designs of shift forks, allowing for additional clearance on the larger diameter first and second gears. It just shows that uh, F1 engineers aren't scared of complexity in the least. The shift barrels are very minimalistic on this gearbox. Uh, they were the hardest part to design on my uh, P1044 gearbox model. But uh, thanks to the new Emboss command in Fusion 360, I could uh, lay out both uh, pin slots in the single sketch. Um, made things a lot easier for sequencing. Uh, I'm really happy with how the design for these came out. And I know it'll shift much better uh, than my previous gearbox just due to some improvements that I was able to incorporate. Moving on to the gear stack or the cassette. It's a pretty typical dog clutch style gearbox, but highly optimized you know, for a very specific purpose. These gears are all patterned off the same centers essentially, but with a lot of hidden details. One cool feature is first gear and reverse gear are directly machined into the lay shaft right next to each other. The reverse gear has the same number of teeth as first gear, but a different module, which allows just enough clearance for the machining. A second gear, also has a very small diameter. So the lay shaft actually necks down and has its own special small spline just for that gear. On the main shaft, the uh, real F1 gearbox uses roller bearings on each of the gears. I unfortunately was not able to find a cost-effective roller bearing or a thin section bearing. So being that this is just a model, I just went ahead and made my own bearings. Uh, they're a dual race, uh, deep groove type bearing and I'm using uh, six millimeter diameter airsoft pellets as balls. Uh, they actually work really well and actually have less play than the real bearings from my previous gearbox. Now that said, I can always go back and change these out to roller bearings or make my own roller bearings from some dowel pins. Uh, but for right now, they're working really well. You know, like I said, I'm still working on the design and everything I'm showing is still rather rough and incomplete. With this gearbox, every part I design tends to have a cascading effect on the previous parts. As this is just a model, I need to go ahead and create display mounts so that the gearbox can actually stand up. And there's tons to do still on the front cover, and there's a hydraulic pump and other little details that I want to have. In the meantime, the plan is to start some test prints, as I didn't do this nearly early enough in my last gearbox. Once I have a working set of actual physical parts, then I'll start on the mechatronics, which will actually control the shifting of the gearbox. And I want this to be interactive, much like my previous gearboxes, where I can actually shift through the gears. So wish me luck on my new obsession, and uh, thanks for watching.